Hey guys, Christine here with Macardo Mom Blogs. Alright, so I know it's not Sunday nor Monday, but I just wanted to quickly update you guys. I figured that I would wait until today since it's Wednesday and I could give you just everything all in one video, right? Instead of posting on Sunday when I file to show you that, I will just do it all today, okay? So today is Wednesday and I did receive my payment for both the state and the stimulus. So the $195 from the state and then also the stimulus, which is the extra $300 from the federal, you know, the CARES Act plan, um, the American relief bill. I forgot exactly what it's called. American something or other. Um, I'll have to look at it when I put my glasses on. But anyway. So I'm going to go off of my notepad again because I don't want to make this video too long because there are a few things that I want to discuss with you guys. And so the first thing is going to be all the different changes with the red alerts, okay? It seems like they continue to update. So that way, as soon as you log in, you can see, you know, at this point right now, they are just saying that they are still working on a small amount of claims, okay? So the majority should have already been taken care of. And then also I received two emails. Now, in case you guys have not received any messages from them, this is how it would look. So as soon as you log in, you will see that you will have whatever number of messages, new messages that they send you. So as you can see, I have one new message, unread message, right? You can see at the top, it says notice Notice of exhaustion of PUA benefits. Now, the benefit year end, which is the buy, right? They abbreviate it. And then it gives you September 4th, 2021. Now, this is the part that is confusing, okay? Because I'm going to read to you exactly what it says, right? So it says, a review of your claim indicates that you may soon exhaust the amount of benefits available to you on this account in, a pro in approximately four weeks. Once your Pandemic Unemployment Assistance, PUA, account balance reaches zero, you will not receive any further benefit payments on this claim because your entitlement to benefits under current PUA regulations will be exhausted. You may attempt to file a new unemployment compensation, you know, abbreviated UC claim by, and then it just tells you the internet, or by telephone. Eligibility for a new claim under the Pennsylvania UC law will depend on, but is not limited to the following criteria. The amount of wages you earn in Pennsylvania during your base year your base year is generally the first four of the last five completed calendar quarters prior to your application for benefits date. Whether you work since 5-3-2020, okay, so now that's when I actually applied, and earn wages equal to or more than six times the weekly benefit rate you had on your last claim. These wages must have been earned between the beginning of your last claim, 5-3-2020, and the beginning date of a subsequent new claim. The reason you are unemployed. For more information about eligibility requirements, log on to our website at www.uc.pa.gov. And then it just shows you the PA career link. And then I received a second email. Now, as you can see, this email, you can see at the top here, right? It says backdate. In response to your email to the Pennsylvania Department of Labor and Industry regarding your pandemic unemployment assistant application, we have taken the following action. No action will be taken at this time. It appears that your PUA claim has been extended and you appear to be filing weekly claims without issue and receiving payments. Your backdate request is still under review. Please continue to check your PUA dash for any updates. In the event you continue to experience issues with the application, please call for assistance at 
appropriate number below. And then they just give you, you know, the different numbers to call. And then sincerely, PUA agent. Now, they just, they don't say who they are. It's just PA agent, right? So there's no way for me to, when I speak to them, because normally, before this all happened, when you call a business, especially a government business, you say, may I speak with such and such, because you get a letter or something, right? And then it'll tell you the contact information, which is the representative or agent that you need to speak with. And their contact number. Now, all of a sudden, this is the re This is how, if you ask me, in my opinion, this is how they get away with this. Okay, they get away with it because there's no way, there's no tracking, there's no way for you to fit, say, well, I spoke with such and such, and such and such told me this on this day, and then I called again, and I spoke with such and such, and such and such told me this and this. You know what I'm saying? There's just no way to track them. And this is exactly why they get away with this. And this is a lot of the confusion, okay? Now, when I share, I'm going to share a few videos from the PA committee meeting. One of the members of the committee addressed this and was saying that there's like no follow-up. Like, you don't know. It, you know, it's a, a mess, basically, is what he said, okay? Now, I don't, like I said, I don't want to keep this video really long, so I'm going to just throw in a couple of clips. I haven't been following the Department of Labor's um, town halls anymore because they just continue to say the same thing. How many, they're so proud of their success that they've gotten to these amount of claims or whatever. But the problem is, if you're not one on that list, you really don't want to continue to hear that. What you want to hear is, when are you going to get to mine, right? When are you going to resolve my issue, right? So I've been following the PA Labor and Industry Committee, okay? And so they are just basically trying to figure out, you know, they continue to have Jennifer Beria come in. Also with, um, I forgot the other guy's name. Um, I'll link it down below. I can't I, His name... It slips my mind but he's also I think he's a deputy or whatever you want to call them to me it doesn't really matter what you call them what name and title they want to go um, under the whole thing is they're all a team and if one falls they all fall okay so the thing that's confusing and I'm gonna share with you guys um, normally I read it to you but I'm just going to show it to you here and you guys can either pause it and read it for yourself and I will also link it down below so that you can actually pull up the article yourself. And the American Rescue Plan, right, which is the ARP, when you go down to whatever program that you're on, now I'm since I'm on PUA, I will read that part, but you can see it goes on to explain about PEUC. PUA and FPUC okay so for pandemic unemployment assistance the PUA program provides assistance to those unemployed individuals who are not eligible for regular or unemployment insurance such as business owners self-employed workers independent contractors individuals who don't do not have significant work history and those individuals who may not be covered by the regular unemployment compensation or are not covered by the unemployment compensation program under state laws. Originally, the PUA program provided up to 39 weeks of unemployment benefit and was set to expire under the CARES Act on December 31st, 2020. The program was then extended on the Consolidated Appropriations Act to provide up to 50 weeks of unemployment benefits through March 14, 2021. Now the ARPA provides up to 79 weeks of unemployment benefits and up to 86 weeks for individuals in states with higher levels of unemployment and is extended through September 6, 2021. Okay, so that is the thing that is really confusing because if they extended it, so you have to think about it. Now, 
it was expiring before at the 50 weeks okay so if you look at my payments here so I am right now at 47 weeks right so this Sunday was my 47th week technically have three weeks left now that would bring me to 50 but if it's been extended to 79 weeks I just don't understand and then when I got that email with the back date and then they said oh it's already been extended so I, I'm just really confused I have no idea what's going on I guess I will continue to keep updating you guys that's really the only thing that I could do but so also let me share with you so as you can see here I still have not received last week's 300 stimulus okay like I explained in the beginning you see it right here and so, and I also didn't receive it today. So I actually, I really don't know if that's going to have to be backdated too and I'm going to have to request backdate or they're going to go into the system and fix it themselves. Uh, if you're on Teams, uh, as of right now, we still just have Republican members uh, on our list of people who are asking questions. So... Next, we'll move on to Representative DeBonzo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As we sit here today, when the, we talk about customer service, how can we improve it? I got a call from a retired case examiner um, late last week. After he would examine a case, he would send an email out to the claimant and just say, listen, this is where we're at. This is what happened. He was told to stop doing that. And, you know, over the time, that was my biggest complaint back in the district. Where is, you know, where is my case at? Why won't nobody uh, reply to me or anything? And he was down to doing it in under one minute. He was told to stop. He didn't stop. He was then let go. He feels because of that. He was told he wasn't needed anymore. Are, are you aware of any uh, instances like this at all? Uh, Representative, I'm not aware of this specific instance or, or you know, what is going on, but I will, uh, with regards to that, that situation, but I will defer to uh, uh, Deputy Secretary Trusky. Yeah, Representative, I'm, I'm also not aware. If, if you could circle back with our legislative director and, and provide some more details, um, I'd be interested in looking into that as well. Um, yeah, very, if yeah. you could do that, that would be appreciated. Yeah. Uh, definitely. And then real quick, I just have a few more here. On the new 500 contractors that are going to be hired, are they working in an office building or are they working at home? Because as we found out in the last hearing, not having internet, you know, there were many of people working from home that PCs weren't strong enough, broadband wasn't available. You know, we really weren't being able to use them to their capacity. Uh, do you guys know where they'll be working from? Yeah, they, they will be working remotely from home. Um, I don't, you know, we're not having the number of IT issues that we had at the beginning. So, and then Spirit Tech's already been doing this for us and they haven't experienced it either. So it should be pretty seamless. So from working from home, there's really no oversight in this either. Uh, what exactly would these guys be doing? Like without, how would they be trained? And, and what time frame do you think we'll see a difference here? Representative, I, let, let me let me correct some misinformation there. There is oversight with individuals working from home. We are able, our supervisors are able to monitor production and also listen to calls that individuals were on from home. Um, Bill, I'll let you answer the remainder of the questions. Yeah, Sorry, and I'm then, having... um... go ahead, Representative. Whenever we do the portal, how will we look for a portal? Um, in other words, when someone calls a service center and has their information taken and is given a ticket number, how will it work step by step uh, for them to track what is being done on their claim? So, you know, it essentially be like going to a, a, a deli counter. Um, you know, you'll be assigned a, a number. Um, if you do call back, uh, as you stated earlier with, with the caseworker you talked to, you know, we'll be able to give that person an update if they haven't heard from us. Um, so the way it works now, um, you know, someone enters the information, it gets put in a queue, and we address that queue as, as folks come through it. Um, you know, we're, we're working out the script 
uh, with Inspiratech as far as what um, the customer service reps are actually going to ask the claimants. Um, there will be a number of supervisors also that will be supervising uh, the CSRs. So, um, you know, I think it'll be a, a huge improvement in considering the volume uh, that we have for, for claimants in the Commonwealth. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking forward to implementing in this. Um, you know, two months is, is what we're looking forward to. Okay, so we should see a difference in two months, and uh, I look forward to getting back here, uh, you know, seeing where we're at, although I'm not happy with the two months. I, I think we should have done this quicker. Um, really don't like where we're at. Uh, the people of this Commonwealth deserve better when it comes to this unemployment situation. Thank you. You had uh, mentioned some things about moving forward, revising this. Um, so what my staff has been often frustrated with is <clears throat> Not all of the staff can access the portal for the constituent. So it's as if one name is the certified individual and then they cannot follow up. Can you speak to that at all, please? Representative, I, I can speak to the legislative por portal. Um, you know, that, that system was built by our in-house IT folks. They've done a fantastic job with it. However, it does not have all of the bells and whistles. Unfortunately, with having to make the updates uh, a month or two ago with uh, PUA and PUC and extended benefits, we had to pull our IT resources to work on those issues and uh, other IT pr priorities within the UC system. We are still looking to upgrade the legislative portal so that we can add more users and we can also allow follow-up questions to be added on the claim so that they don't have to file a, a new claim each time you know, for the same claimant. So we are making improvements. Those are in the works and they will be coming down the road. Okay, so. Yeah, and that, if I could add, Jen, yeah, yeah that, that specific it, improvement is in the, the works, Representative Maloney. Oh, okay, super. Um, I just want to paint a little bit of a picture because of <laughs> the staff frustration. So you may have several people answering the phone pretty much nonstop one individual will be answering the phone and now they were the sort of the portal contact and they can't be gotten to by the person who called. And so literally it's like this mess of who's qualified, who's not, who talked to this person and then back and forth. And it really is frustrating to the staff. So I'm glad to hear that, um, that this has been identified. Appreciate it. Will that, um, that you said that that's in the works. I do want to go to something you said, Will, with respect to a deli type procedure. <clears throat> I know that in um, Jimmy John's, it's sort of an assembly line, you're on a team. But if that one team member is not there, you don't get your hoagie at the end of the line. So to me, it's sort of like if we cannot have our team in place, you don't eat today. So I appreciate you. Uh, identifying that and that we can go forward knowing that by all means these folks need to get an answer so just one last thing with determination of um of benefits i've had several new sort of disasters come in and or call the office with respect to overpayment we don't seem to be able to help these folks um, and I realize adjudication and appeals and all the process becomes a long drawn out issue for you guys, for us, but for the constituent, um, I think I brought this up before. And can you guys speak at all to the fact that we now have people calling up and saying, well, after I put forward all my numbers, certified all my um, logs of of payment now they're telling me i owe fourteen thousand dollars to pay back i mean some of these things are almost hard to even face them when they say now what do i do so representative there's 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 many situations in which a, an overpayment could occur uh you know there could be individuals who were receiving UC payments and during the course of receiving payments, perhaps the employer came back and said, you know, they, they 
weren't fired. They just didn't show up to work. You know, there, there could be disputed reasons for termination of the employment that would not qualify qualify them for UC. So, you know, that would be a situation where an individual would have an overpayment. Um, so, you know, it, it actually is, is a broader issue than that. And we get into non-fault and fault overpayments. Um, you know, I would have to look, you know, we look into each claim because each claim has particular facts that are specific to that situation. If you have a case that you would like to discuss, we, we'd be more than happy to discuss it with the constituent in your office. However, we, we can't make blanket statements on, on overpayments because there's there's many factors that could potentially go into that. All right. Bill, do you have anything to add? Yeah, who would yeah, exactly yeah. be one, that person thing, that I would yeah, talk one to? Thing we're, one thing we're seeing quite a bit of is overpayments in the PUA system because the individual should be on traditional unemployment. Unfortunately, the way federal law is set up, it requires us to to quote, write that overpayment. So that seems to, I would imagine, Representative, um, that's what a lot of your offices are seeing. So we're we're trying to work through those issues with the claimants. So to the point, um, who would exactly be that contact that I would talk to? Could you get that to me? I would appreciate it a lot. We will be in contact with you. We'll reach out through our legislative office. Super. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for this video. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for this video. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click on the bell notification so you are notified every time I upload a video. And as always, guys, you be safe out there. Bye.